Hello, I'm Monica Rea and welcome to my lovely channel. Today, I'm going to be putting on a mini fashion show where I am going to be trying on just about every garment that I've made thus far. And I say just about because I have made garments for other people and for those, I will be posting pictures at, towards the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned to see those. So just a brief backstory, I've always had an interest in sewing and I didn't fully start sewing until last August, so about nine months ago. And for the longest time, I've wanted to fully develop my unique style. So over the past few years, I've really been reevaluating what's important in life and what makes me happy. And what I found was very important for me is making sure that I have a creative outlet or some type of creative expression, which in my case has manifested into sewing. Among other things, I do enjoy painting a lot as well. So with that being said, the eras of inspiration that I pull from is the 1950s and the late 1890s. I absolutely love the silhouettes of both of them and design elements of each. So moving forward on this channel, every garment that I make from here on out will be pulling from either one of those eras with a nice sprinkling of modern. So if that's something you're interested in, you should consider subscribing. All right, let's go. Oh, and so this, this shirt that you're about to see, that's my first shirt that I ever made. I had absolutely no idea what a facing was or how to finish the sleeves. I attempted a zipper in the back, which you can see it's a little uneven because of the way I sewed on the zipper, but overall, I'm pretty proud of it. Next, this orange crop sweatshirt. And I was just experimenting with it. I actually copied that pattern from a regular sweatshirt and just made it cropped and added a little pocket on the side for my cell phone. So this dress is actually my first dress that I've ever made and I'm really happy and super excited with the way that it came out. It actually has uh, boning channels in it and a lining and it was just very involved for a first dress but I was really excited with all of the things that I learned while making this dress. A general goal that I have for all of my garments is to make sure that they have pockets though some dresses I forgot to do that but ideally I try to add pockets in everything. So this fabric I actually bought online and I really loved the way it looked. I wasn't sure how it was going to look with it being the foil print, but once I saw it in person, I really, really loved it. And I think this shirt turned out amazing and it fits really well. This sweatshirt, it's the exact same pattern, if you will, as the orange sweatshirt, but I didn't make an actual hem. I left the hem raw on the bottom and a wider neckline, which is actually the neckline that I was going for with the orange one, but didn't make it wide enough, which I still love both of the looks equally. Uh, so this next one is like one of my absolute favorite dresses. I love the fit of it and it kind of gives me like 1950s Palm Beach vibes, but yeah. <laughs> This fun little tropical dress is my most recent dress. I think it turned out fit-wise really nice. It's a very comfortable dress just like the previous one. And this was my first time ever putting buttons all the way down because the last dress did have buttons but they were just decorative. These are functional buttons and they're mother of pearl and I, I love this dress so much. Okay, so this is my interpretation of the late 1890s. Mind you, I did not make the shirt. I did make the waistcoat and the skirt. Um, but you can take this as they were essentially mock-ups. These were my first waistcoats. I didn't, I drafted it myself. So I don't have a petticoat on or anything like that. I do have on a corset. 
I definitely want to make more of this in the future, or more styles like this, definitely different colors. Um, and I would love to make a bustle, and a petticoat, and a chemise, and another corset. In the future, I will go a little more into historically accurate clothing for that time frame. But for now, you get to see my fun little interpretation of it. Alrighty, I actually made a matching skirt to this, but I wanted to see what it looked like, just the shirt with, you know, regular pants. I really love how it turned out. Overall construction is really, really great. Okay, so here is the matching skirt that I was telling you about, and you can see a better look at the side. I put a upside down side zipper, <laughs> which I, I love, and it's actually necessary, like putting this shirt on, like it's so much easier to be able to zip it down. So this shirt I made for my sister. It's the same pattern as the other two shirts earlier, but can you tell that I absolutely love puffs and fluffs and frills and flounces? So this was my first attempt at making a dress for a child. And yes, this is my beautiful baby, Isa. And here's a dress that I made for my beautiful princess, Gabriella. And this is a coat that I made for my friend, Becky. I will be showing you guys a step-by-step -step process on how to make a coat in the future. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.